impacting behavior frequency. This week's assigned reading, as well as the supporting videos, all really paint a solid picture of how we can assess and impact behavior frequency. But I really want to focus on one point that is mentioned in one of the videos that I believe is pivotal to understanding behavior frequency. And this is the guidance-based intervention method versus the authority or discipline-based intervention method. Now, this can be applied to children, to teens, and to adults, so I will make sure to offer examples so that each, uh, that support each group, so that the concepts can be applied and slightly modified uh, depending on the demographic that you're working with. With reference to behavior or behavior modification, guidance versus discipline. So what does this really look like? So guidance-based intervention is the act of seeking resolution when there is a problem or a difficult situation and is most commonly facilitated by someone who is in a position of authority. Now, an authority or discipline-based intervention method is really the practice of training people to obey rules or to follow a code of conduct and is often coupled with punishment for noncompliance. Guidance doesn't usually involve punishment, rather the reinforcement of the desired result. Discipline usually involves rules and punishment. So the focus is different when it comes to molding behavior. The guide or the guidance method focuses on learning and engagement and ultimately wants the individual to develop a sense of responsibility, accountability, and self-control, while the disciplinary focuses on rules and compliance and typically trains the individual to be obedient. Essentially, guidance is found in someone, whereas punishment Punishment is something that happens to someone. The goal of guidance is to reinforce cause and effect, to reinforce choices and consequences, while the goal of punishment is really just simply to make the experience unpleasant. So in my definition of guidance, I mention learn, important points like learning, engagement, responsibility, accountability, and self-control. Let's use a different example um, or a different term mentioned earlier so that we can demonstrate this concept. So for this example, I'm going to use just this concept of reaction or overreaction. So I'll use a common example that I'm sure anyone uh, has, anyone, everyone has experienced at some point in their life. So you're at a restaurant with a friend or a family or your family. Service is slow that day. You place your order. The server insists on relying on their memory to mentally take the order rather than writing it down. Then 45 minutes later, the server brings it out. And what happens? It's all wrong. So this is a very common situation that elicits a reaction of some sort in most cases. We all know that there are many contributing factors as to why our food might be late coming out or why the order might be right or wrong. But how we handle the situation is where the identification of behavior comes in. Your behaviors will likely demonstrate either, number one, blowing up at the server and making a scene, number two, telling the manager that your experience was awful, or number three, rolling your eyes, initially being annoyed, but then pretty much brushing it off, finishing your meal. So let's consider this scenario from both perspectives from the guidance intervention method and from the punishment intervention method. So consider the guidance method. Suppose you had a guide teach you how to navigate a situation like this. How might they advise you to seek resolution? Would they advise you to blow up at the server, voice a complaint, or walk away? So most likely in this scenario, they would advise you to follow number two or number three. And they would likely say that blowing up at the server and making a big scene is only going to make them look like a fool. So now let's consider this from the disciplinary side. So suppose you had a disciplinary or an authority figure uh, teach you how to navigate the situation like this. How might they advise you to seek resolution? Would they advise you to blow up at the server, voice a complaint, or walk away? So in this case, they most likely would advise you number one or number two under this model, because in the end, somebody has to be punished and they deserve it. And there's always a consequence for an action. 
And so, so hopefully you're seeing a little bit um, the two different perspectives, how they might advise in a situation like that. So now let's look at this from a counseling perspective. Let's look at it from the child's point of view. A child witnesses one of their parents' reactions to this restaurant situation. They are now in school and the cafeteria worker gave the child green beans instead of corn. And the child now acts out and makes a scene. The teacher has to get involved and calls the parents to tell them how unruly and disrespectful their child was to the cafeteria person. Why do you suppose this is? Number two, let's look at this from the teenager's perspective. So the teenager, now having kind of this understanding of what conflict means and emotions, how they correspond and just that stage of life. So they see their parent respond to a server this way every time they go out to eat. Now, here's the change. Every time they go out to eat or the food order is wrong, the teenager now gets anxiety. They don't want to be there. They feel uncomfortable. So how does this look? The teenager now doesn't want to go out to eat anymore with their family. They develop anxiety sitting at the table in anticipation that the order uh, might be wrong or that the service might be slow. Uh, and they physically start to feel ill. So now the teenager avoids restaurants because the restaurant acts as a trigger for their anxiety. The parents can't figure out what the heck is going on. And so they say, we need to go put our child in counseling because clearly there's a problem. So from that perspective, see how that plays out on a, on a different scale. Now let's look at this from an adult perspective. The adult who originally was the, the originally the child now continues the behavior that was demonstrated to them when their food is wrong or their service is slow at a restaurant. Now this is causing problems between them and their spouse because their partner doesn't approve of this behavioral response. So hopefully you're able to see how the identification of the demonstrated behavior is the very, very first step to understanding the why behind the behavior. And this is really where you would have to start in order to start impacting the frequency of the behavior. So the greater point here is to ensure that as you are learning more and more about behavior, uh, and problem behavior more specifically, it's important to understand that we have all played the role of the guide and the disciplinary, but we should all strive to change our own behaviors so that we are demonstrating guidance versus punishment as we continue to learn more and more about how to modify behavior, more so so that we can teach others how to manage, how the management of ourselves is critical to the management of others. Keep this in mind, management of self to the management of others. Keep this in mind as you think about those three scenarios up above. I sure hope that you were challenged this week with this perspective and just some thoughts and things that you may have read. Um, please continue to dig into this stuff uh, and connect these dots. Uh, behavior modification is so, so um, instrumental to the field of psychology and behaviorism. Have a great week, everybody.